In 2020, the Land Stewardship Project secured grant funding from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture to partner with four different farms in Minnesota and one in Wisconsin with three objectives. First, to identify local and available materials and recipes that could be used in a Johnson Sioux bioreacting composter and result in composts that undergo a full heating cycle, reaching maximum temperatures of 140 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit before returning to ambient temperatures, killing pathogens, terminating weeds, and promoting the growth of beneficial microbes. The Johnson Sioux bioreacting method was developed in New Mexico with locally sourced materials. By testing and developing multiple compost recipes with materials available to Minnesota farmers, this project hopes to increase the effectiveness of the Johnson Sioux composters locally and the speed of their adoption by Minnesota farmers. The next project objective is to compare the biodiversity and abundance of microbes across the different farms and recipes created for the project with three industrial produced compost standards, Preston Woodchip Compost, Cosmo Compost, and Vermont Compost Company Compost. Because industrial compost is turn and the priority is to finish the compost in a short amount of time, we hypothesize the overall biodiversity and abundance of microbes in these industrial compost to be lower than in the compost produced through the Johnson Sioux method. The final objective of the project is to educate and share the results with as many interested farmers in the region as possible. The Johnson Sioux compost system is a complicated and unique system, and we want to share our findings and create recipes that result in a complete thermophilic cycle. For the study, Land Stewardship Project staff collaborated with all five farmer scientists to build two Johnson Sioux compost bioreactors at each of their farms during June 2021 and June 2022. Each bioreactor consisted of a 40 by 48 inch pallet base with a cylindrical frame made of 6 by 6 foot 10 gauge wire remesh and lined with landscape fabric. To create airways through the compost, six 4 inch diameter perforated PVC pipes were set vertically in each composter. These were removed after the compost settled. Compost recipes followed roughly these ratios. One third nitrogen source, one third yard waste or leaves, and one third a carbon source. The bioreactors that were built in June 2021 will be referred to as Compost 2021, and the bioreactors built in June 2022 are Compost 2022 in the following results. The project goal of identifying local materials to create recipes that achieve both our objectives was only half met through the project. While the project did identify local ingredients that resulted in biodiverse and fungi-dense compost, we were never able to find a consistent recipe that met the temperature standard requirements of the National Organic Composting Standard. We were able to reach peak temperatures for up to three days in a few bioreactors, but the sustaining of those key temperatures was not achieved. When looking at the temperature in relationship to higher fungal to bacterial ratios, or F to B, from the soil food web lab results, we did not observe a strong correlation. More research is still needed to understand the anaerobic and aerobic effects of Johnson Sioux compost design on microbial populations and to find recipes that achieve higher sustained temperatures that reach federal standards. While the compost did not sustain the temperature requirements required, most of the bioreactors did show more diversity in bacterial and fungal species than the three industrial composts. On average, across the 2022 compost samples, we saw 138 different species of fungi and 857 different bacterial species. The industrial averaged 131 different species of fungi and 760 bacterial species. However, the industrial wood compost did show the highest overall fungal diversity. When it came to higher trophic level soil microbes, we used Soil Food Web Lab of New York direct microscopy results to evaluate for nematode and protozoa populations. We can visually see that the nematode counts were overall higher in the bioreactor results than the industrial produced composts. The industrial compost averaged 9 nematodes per gram of compost sample and the bioreactors averaged 83 per gram of compost sample. Similarly, the protozoa averages were higher in the bioreactor results than the industrial produced composts. Another measure we evaluated across the compost samples is the fungal to bacteria ratio or F to B. A diverse and mature compost should produce higher trophic levels of microbes such as nematodes and protozoa and also be more fungal than bacterial. As we can see, we had a spread of results in the ratios of F to B in our bioreactor results. 
Again, we can see that composts that contain wood chips did well on the F to B ratio, though the Good Turn 2021 bioreactor also did well while not containing any wood chips in the recipe. While sharing the completed study results for the project is an ongoing process, we were able to complete many of our educational goals within the grant timeline. Land Stewardship Project hosted an on-farm field day at the Pangrak Dairy Farm with BEAM creators Dr. David Johnson and Hui Chun Su Johnson, attended by 78 farmers. Land Stewardship Project has also held a winter workshop with Dr. Elaine Ingram with a morning presentation and afternoon lab resulting in attendance of 88 and 40 respectively. LSP created six podcasts featuring local farmers and soil microbiology experts, as well as this video and one more general video on the Johnson Soup Bioreactor's use within Minnesota. The final results will also be distributed once published through the LSP network. The results for all three objectives show that the Johnson Soup Bioreactor is a very promising setup to produce biodiverse and fungal dominated composts, especially in comparison to industrial produced composts in Minnesota and the upper Midwest. We saw that many of the bioreactor composts would make for a good soil inoculant, but they should not be applied directly to vegetables as it is not certain the pathogenic microbes were exterminated. Lastly, there remains a strong interest for learning events and research on the Johnson Soup bioreactor system and how to apply it at scale in Minnesota and the upper Midwest region. Additional research is still needed to understand the aerobic and anaerobic nature of the compost in relation to microbial diversity and abundance. There is also a continued need to find easy to use recipes for local producers with locally available materials. Next, some management tips for those looking to build their own Johnson Soup bioreactors. First, start with the raw natural ingredients such as straw, wood chips, and vegetation. When we added additional compost or soil in large quantities to the bioreactors, it resulted in a wet, sludge-like consistency and the ingredients became too heavy for the bioreactor frames. One bioreactor even collapsed in our 2022 compost trial. We also recommend using small amounts of raw manure and, if possible, more legume vegetation than manure for the nitrogen component. We saw that compost with a lot of manure became anaerobic and produced lots of flies. When it comes to building the composters, we learned from the first year of the trial that simply using a hose and spray nozzle to wet the ingredients as we were adding them to the bioreactors did not produce consistently wet ingredients in the composter. In order to get consistently wet ingredients, building a pool with the use of straw bales and a tarp to soak the materials before loading them into the composter produced better results. It is also recommended to build automatic waterers for the compost. And we did see that farmers that had automatic watering setups had good moisture in their final composts. This feeds into our last tips on composter storage and moisture management. Although bioreactors do need less manual labor than turn piles, they still require daily management as they mature throughout the year. It is important to maintain a 70% moisture content as the composts mature, and the bioreactors should also be moved into a warm storage area in the winter so that the redworms and larger microbes do not freeze or become dormant as the compost matures. For more information on this project, head to the microbiology page on the Land Stewardship Project website, sign up for our soil builders and soil health email updates, or become a member of the Land Stewardship Project.